Okay. Uh, so we got to here. Great. All right. Good morning, uh, everyone. I'm Mark Gallarducci. I'm uh, Governor Brown's Director of Emergency Services here in California. I uh, wanted to take a few minutes and give you a, uh, a quick briefing on uh, the fire activities and the, and the various cascading impacts uh, and consequences that we're dealing with um, in, in uh, Northern California uh, and kind of what is the prognosis as we move forward uh, in the coming uh, hours and days. Uh, to start off, though, I have a series of uh, folks that will be briefing in, in different places with regards to their agency's response. Uh, know that you're here at the State Operations Center. Uh, you see the operations behind me. This is a, a multi-agency center where all the different state agencies uh, and our federal partners at FEMA and others have come together uh, to be able to uh, effectively coordinate the overall state's response in support of the local authorities and the citizens that have been impacted uh, by this event. You know, um, our hearts, hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to those. We know many have lost their homes and it's been a very challenging uh, and, and very dynamic uh, last uh, several hours. Uh, continues to be the case with the, the winds and the, and the fire weather we're having. Uh, so to continue to frame that issue, we'll start off with uh, uh, the director of the CAL FIRE, or Chief uh, Ken Pamela, who will we'll give you an overview of where we're at on our fire conditions. Chief Pamela. Thank you, uh, Director Gellarducci. Uh, Ken Pamela, Director CAL FIRE. Uh, as, uh, as the director pointed out, uh, we are under significant fire weather conditions over most of California. Uh, late last week, we entered into red flag warnings uh, for many uh, of the counties in California, and that's for high winds and low humidities. Uh, late last night and early this morning, uh, over 50 mile an hour winds surfaced over uh, the northern uh, Bay Area and uh, interior uh, Sacramento Valley region. <coughs> With that uh, brought uh, numerous uh, ignitions, fire ignitions across uh, the wildlands. As we speak right now, over 14 major fires burning uh, across eight uh, counties from Mendocino, Lake, Sonoma, uh, Napa, uh, across the valley to Yuba, Nevada, uh, and into Butte. Uh, we are burning over 57,000 acres as we currently uh, speak. Uh, most of these fires have limited or no containment. These are very rapidly uh, burning fires. Uh, almost the entire effort uh, last night and early this morning was focused on evacuations and moving citizens out of harm's way. Uh, we are hopeful today. Uh, weather forecasts are indicating that uh, sometime here within the next several hours that the winds should subside. Uh, and we hope that slows the forward progress of many of the fires and allow firefighters to uh, get in and engage and actively fight fires. Uh, understand though right now, uh, very conservative estimates are that over 1,500 homes uh, and commercial facilities have been destroyed. Um, we are beginning to work on damage assessment. Obviously the focus has been on the fire itself, but we hope to have updated uh, damage assessment figures uh, here within the next 12 to 24 uh, hours. Uh, again, we are a long way uh, out of fire season in California, and it's not just here in Northern California. Uh, currently, we are under Santa Ana wind conditions uh, in Southern California, and that's, a, as we know, a traditional uh, fire window in the fall months throughout, uh, throughout Southern California, uh, and we are already experiencing uh, fire activity there. So uh, we are moving resources throughout the state. Uh, in addition to CAL FIRE, we are uh, very engaged in the state's mutual aid system with uh, hundreds of fire engines and fire departments across the state uh, engaging in this firefight with resources from San Diego to Siskiyou uh, uh, mobilized and deployed. We're working very closely with our partners at the California National Guard and the California Office of Emergency Services to ensure uh, the right resources get uh, to where they need to be. But obviously we're prioritizing and we're moving resources where the greatest uh, life safety threats uh, are uh, so we can protect, again, uh, life and property. So again, I think I want to really reiterate that uh, firefighters, law enforcement officers, EMS fo uh, professionals are out on the front lines moving citizens out of harm's way. We need every resident, every resident to heed evacuation uh, warnings and orders and move out uh, quickly and orderly so that firefighters can focus on protecting homes, protecting infrastructure, protecting critical uh, hospitals uh, and other critical infrastructure uh, and we can get through uh, this firefight. So with that, thank you. I'd like to introduce uh, Commissioner uh, Warren Stanley of the California Highway Patrol. 
Thank you, Ken. I'm Commissioner Warren Stanley with the California Highway Patrol. It's the CHP's response. We have approximately 83 personnel assigned to roadway closures throughout the two fires, the Cascade Fire and the Atlas Fires. With that being said, there are going to be a, a lot of roadways shut down. So we're asking the public if you would go to our website, www.chp.ca.gov, have information up there regarding all the closures we have. It would take too long to name all the closures in here because we have so many of them. So if you could do that, uh, that would be great help to us and to the public. Also, some of our personnel, we're looking at some of the uh, shelters uh, throughout the Bay Area and other places where the fires are, uh, taking a look at those and, uh, and providing assistance for security at those shelters with our personnel. As uh, Director Pimlot said, um, we're pleased to be working with all our partners to, to, to alleviate this problem as soon as possible. And uh, we uh, just want to thank the public for their support. Thank you. I'm Major General David Baldwin with the California National Guard. The California National Guard is supporting fire, rescue, evacuation, sheltering, and security efforts throughout all of the fires burning in Northern California. We've deployed three medevac medical evacuation helicopters from the California Army and Air National Guard that are transporting victims of the fire to burn centers in Northern California. We've also deployed six firefighting helicopters to assist CAL FIRE with their efforts, and we're sending 100 military police personnel to Napa to provide support for law enforcement and to assist with evacuations. We've also opened our armory in Petaluma and Santa, Roma, Santa Rosa to accept evacuees. Uh, we are stand ready to uh, provide additional assistance as the need arise. Thanks, General. So right now, uh, Governor Brown has been uh, briefed on this uh, regularly. Uh, a short time ago, uh, he did proclaim a state of emergency that took into account the counties uh, that have been impacted by the fire. That state of emergency uh, clears any hurdles or uh, regulatory impediments. It ensures that all state assets and, and other resources that are necessary to provide uh, protection to life and property and respond to this event uh, are taking place, and, and he continues to get briefed uh, by the team that's here uh, up at the podium with me uh, regularly. Um, our priorities are going to be now moving forward is to continue to support the sheltering operations, uh, you know, beyond the firefighting uh, that Chief Pemlot talked about, is to support those sheltering operations. Uh, we know we have several thousand people who have had to evacuate from fires both in Napa and are in shelters in in the Napa Valley uh, or uh, have had to evacuate in, in Sonoma County and our shelters that have been established there. We have had hospitals that have required uh, evacuation. We've had special care facilities that have, eva have required evacuation. All of those take a significant amount of coordination and assets to ensure that um, uh, those individuals, those special needs populations and, uh, 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 and others that require special assistance are taken care of, and so that will remain our priority. We have uh, talked with our partners at the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA. Uh, FEMA is supporting us with personnel, and we've also requested from them uh, assistance with uh, sheltering um, uh, services and other kinds of uh, sheltering items like cots and blankets and, and water to augment the, the shelters that have been put in place um, in both uh, Napa and Sonoma counties. Um, uh, regularly, we will be working to, uh, with our local counterparts to do damage assessment, uh, to get a good handle on how much damage has been taking place. We know we've had loss, total destruction of homes, and we've had damage to homes. Uh, we know we have a number of injuries uh, and possibly some fatalities, uh, which we're still trying to get uh, our hands around with regards to uh, that whole aspect. And so we'll continue to work on that. Uh, as a priority in the next few hours. The other thing is uh, power restoration, uh, power, water, and, um, and cell site service. Uh, currently, there's roughly about 45 to 50,000 uh, without power between Napa and Sonoma counties. Uh, we are working closely with uh, uh, the Pacific Gas and Electric and the other uh, utility providers. We're working with uh, AT&T and Verizon on the cell site services. Um, to be able to try to get those services back up 
and operational. It's a, it's a key priority. We know that once we get the communications back up, people can start communicating with their families and, and others within the, uh, the region. Um, so the state operations center behind me is fully activated as well as our regional emergency operations centers um, uh, in the coastal region. Uh, all agencies, this is an all hands on deck response and uh, we will continue to uh, be here for the long haul. There will be multiple phases that we'll be going through. First in the in this response phase and being able to address the immediate needs. Um, and then as, as we move forward, starting to look at the recovery process and getting those communities and those individuals' lives back up online. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to uh, uh, answer any questions that uh, you may have. Thank you. Um, have there been resources, I know in the past couple of weeks, um, Cal OES has organized resources to go out of state for responses to you know, Hurricane Harvey and other things. Um, are we depleted in any way? Do we have full resources here to deal with these fires? We, we, so the question had to do with uh, the resources that uh, the state has already sent out to support hurricanes around the country and the Mexi Mexico City earthquake. Uh, and the answer is yes, we, we actually have a significant amount of resources here. We do regularly manage the drawdown of resources in California. It is a very large state and we have a lot of resources. So we are a donor state and many times we're sending resources to support other jurisdictions, but we never send more out of the state than uh, what we would need in the event that we would have uh, uh, something as, as uh, large as this or larger. So we are in good with resources. And, um, and I, let me just say that the system at large, law enforcement, emergency management, fire and rescue, emergency medical has been phenomenal. Um, we are getting resources from through all, throughout California, uh, as Chief Pemlot says, from San Diego to Siskiyou, all responding and pouring into the areas that have been affected. Perhaps for the chief, uh, could you describe what the crews were up against last night? So imagine, uh, you know, just a wind-whipped fire, uh, you know, burning at explosive rates. This is 50 mile an hour winds pushing the flaming front. Uh, when it was hitting these impacted communities, literally it's burning into the city of Santa Rosa and burning department stores, uh, you know, burning box stores, uh, impacting hospitals. Uh, it was literally uh, move people from out of the front of the path of this fire. Uh, fighting the fire at that time was not going to be possible just due to the intensity and how rapid that fire was spreading. Uh, we've been back here time and time again in the last four to five years. These are the conditions we continue to talk about that California uh, is experiencing. Even when folks, the public may be lulled into thinking the fall months are here and the temperatures are going down, uh, this is traditionally California's worst time for fires. California's most damaging fires have occurred in the months of October, uh, and we're seeing that again this morning, today. Do we have any idea um, how many people live in the evacuation zones throughout those 14 fires? You know, we're estimating that 20,000 plus individuals are home, have been evacuated, but I don't have a count for you on actually how many live within the impacted zones. We can certainly find that out. So number on casualties, you're still counting that? Yeah, as Director Gellarducci said, uh, that's an assessment that we're, that's ongoing. Uh, again, this all started about 10 o'clock last night. Uh, many communities were just overrun. And so now we're working back through all of the sources, local law enforcement, EMS, the hospitals, uh, fire agencies, and many others uh, to determine accountability where folks are. And, and so that process will be ongoing. You know when we might get numbers on that? Uh, I, I uh, hesitate to speculate on that, but certainly it's uh, in everybody's best interest for us to work on that quickly, and that is literally one of our priorities along with obviously sheltering and getting people out and taken care of. So we're actively working on that today, and we hope to certainly have better numbers uh, uh, you know, later today. Um, I think you said earlier, and, and correct me if my numbers are wrong, but 1,500 structures potentially being threatened, and you said that was a conservative estimate? No, actually, 1,500 structures, homes, and commercial facilities actually destroyed. destroyed. Yeah, many, many more threatened. Uh, but again, uh, we're out there trying to get the assessments done right now. But just the initial uh, estimates from our firefighters and law enforcement personnel uh, at the scene uh, across the, the swath of these fires indicates at least 1,500. Is that a conservative estimate because right now we can't get to certain areas? That is correct. Were all these fires started overnight that they, I mean, that's quite a few fires just to start overnight. 
Absolutely. All of these fires uh, started sometime from 10 o'clock uh, last evening on into the early hours uh, this morning, and, and we continue to get new starts as the day warms up. Uh, and again, we're under critical fire weather conditions. That's why the, the National Weather Service put red flag warnings up uh, across much of the state. That's for low humidities uh, and high winds, and we combine that with the extremely dry vegetative conditions that we have, every spark is going to ignite a fire. And so re regardless of what that may be, uh, wind can impact, start fires, down power lines, vehicles pulling off into the dry grass, all of those things have the potential. And under these kind of conditions, the risk is just extreme of new starts. And that's literally what happened uh, last night and this morning. The, the planet's literally aligned to have these explosive conditions. Just for perspective's sake, can you um, talk about the magnitude of that number 14 either starting or um, accelerating in just a, a matter of a couple of hours. So have we seen that historically? So we have been uh, throughout the summer seeing just uh, an accelerated number of fires. Literally as we speak this week, uh, we are about 1,500 fires uh, to date, year to date above where we were last year. So our initial attack or a number of new fires we've been getting every week has been increasing uh, every week throughout the year. Uh, we've been doing an amazing job, all of the firefighters across the state, uh, of putting these fires out uh, in that initial attack phase. But some of them escape, just be for lots of reasons. The case of last night's very challenging when you have these kinds of weather conditions working against the firefighters. And so you start getting ignitions, uh, multiple fires starting at the same time. You know, we've got to try to react and move resources. Uh, so you're, it's not uncommon to have multiple <laughs> fires burning. But I can certainly tell you it's becoming more the norm now to have multiple large damaging fires like we're seeing today. Would you call just the past like 10 or 12 hours exceptional though, just given the magnitude of the world? I think what we're going to find when we talk to seasoned fire professionals uh, here uh, in the next several days is they're going to talk about conditions uh, that they have not seen before. And we were saying that two years ago in 2015 when the Valley and the Butte fires burned in these same areas. Uh, seeing conditions we hadn't seen. Well, I think we've raised the bar again in California in just terms of the, the conditions that we're facing uh, and the destruction and devastation. Who and why was the National Guard called out and um, what, what conditions um, required them to be called out? Well, I'll certainly defer to General Baldwin, but I can tell you from CAL FIRE and from the Office of Emergency Services, it's routine to work very closely with the California National Guard uh, providing surge capacity, not only in aviation assets, both helicopters uh, and the MAFs, the, the C-130 air tankers, but also in a variety of support equipment uh, as well as hand crews. And that's become, quite frankly, a go-to uh, source for uh, firefighting uh, in California when we need surge capacity. It's uh, become very well practiced uh, and a process that we have very uh, well in place. Thanks, Ken. I would just add that, uh, that the California National Guard is fully integrated into both the fire and law enforcement mutual aid systems. So when either of those systems become tapped or they need resources that are unique to the military that we can provide to assist law enforcement agencies or the allied fire services, we're ready to deploy. So you were called right away? I mean, do you know what time you were called? Uh, the initial, our initial calls came um, early this morning and uh, for both the medical evacuation helicopters, the firefighting helicopters, and then uh, Director Ghilarducci in communication with law enforcement leaders <coughs> in the area made the decision about 8 o'clock this morning to deploy the military police personnel. Do you know anything about their rescue at night uh, with the helicopter? I'd have to defer to CAL FIRE on that. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with any of the specific operations that occurred relative to rescues last night, but we can certainly look at it for you. I think we can do more one-on-one -on -one interviews later if you want to get that scheduled, but uh, for right now, we're going to call a close for today's press conference. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks, guys.
Hey, Olivia. I just uh, she was like, you know, hey. Oh, yes. Uh, the number of acres by the I'm leading the numbers directly off the board and I'm waiting in the title so I can take something to drill down and tell you that you're going to be able to see the numbers. I'm 